Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. It's in the description below. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a debut of a brand on the channel. This is the Oxlund Junior Moonphase. 42 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. It's built in Lucerne by the independent brand established by master watchmaker and engineer Ludwig Oxlund, long famous for his work with Elise Norden and before that the Vatican. He is a specialist in celestial complications, particularly achieving more with less mechanically. This watch is all about minimalism aesthetically and mechanically. 42 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. The watch is remarkably thin, only 11 millimeters thick, and this is a rare case of a watch with lugs being the same distance lug to lug as it is across the case. It's a 42 millimeter diameter watch. The lug to lug span across the wrist is 42 millimeters. The spacing between the lug horns is 22 millimeters. And it's worth mentioning that a man named Peter Cantini makes all of the calendar complication components, the dials, the case, the buckle, and the strap for the watch. So everything is artisanally crafted. The watch is on a lovely strap. Mr. Cantini has done a wonderful job with this calfskin leather piece which is substantial but supple. You can see black on the top, matte finish. It is a sheer cut showing the thickness and the layers of leather with a slight bonding stitch. And you can see there is a monotone black stitch on top, a more natural calfskin color and grain on the bottom. Ox und Junior, it is created expressly for the brand. You can see just how flush the strap is to the case as there are little revetments or garages built into the flank of the case, allowing the strap to be close coupled to the case, but also able to move through its full range of motion. So you can pull the strap straight down around a small wrist. Now, the thing I love about this watch, and we'll check out the buckle now, is that all of the CNC work has been left raw. So you can see the CNC drill bits machining lines left on the profile of the buckle as well as the case. And you can see that it has sort of a unfinished industrial look to it, which to my eye is all part of the appeal. You can see that rendered on the bottom. Everything has been CNC'd precisely, but then left in its unfinished raw state as it popped out of the mill. You can see that too with the case and it goes all the way around from lug to lug, the junctions between lug and case flank sharply machined away by the CNC bit. Now, the case itself is a little bit more sophisticated. As you can see, it has a satin grain that runs circumferentially, so that's not completely raw. And it gives way to a bezel that is domed in profile and also satin grained. The crown is exceptionally large and sharply knurled. It is a screw-down crown. The watch does have 100 meter water resistance. So between loom, which you'll see in a moment, 100 meter water resistance and automatic winding in a grade five titanium case, this is a sports watch, albeit an unlikely one. The dial is a sort of anthracite color, so it's not quite black. It's between gray and black with a distinct metallic tinge and a vertical satin finish. You can see there is a little symbolic sun up at 12 o'clock. That is applied gold leaf. And then there is a 31 aperture radially arrayed date. And you read against the hour or minute indices to estimate the date. So for example, halfway through the month, is halfway through the hour down at 30 minutes and that's going to be the 15th. So you use these indices to approximate the current date and you also note that the basic ETA 28242's quick set mechanism is left intact here allowing you to quick set the date. Now taking a quick look at the moon phase complication, this is advanced using a backing system so you actually activate the hacking or stop seconds of the basic ETA movement and then what you do is you back from 10 o'clock through midnight, back and forth and back and forth to incrementally advance the moon phase. You'll also note that the moon has a silver, you have the gold leaf, you also have a silver leaf moon, and then a little individual golden cabochon to represent the stars of the cosmos. The moon phase adjustment interval, you're only going to need to do this once, I assure you, is over 3,000 years. Precisely, it is 3,478 years and 0.27 years. In other words, once you set it, you can quite literally forget it. Unless you're a vampire, you're not going to be resetting this thing any time in your life. 
it is minimalist, and that is part of the ethos of Oxund Jr. There is very little, again, you can see that CNC machining pattern across the case back. There is very little that's here that doesn't strictly need to be here. Automatic winding, thanks to ETA 28242, 25 joules, bi-directional automatic winding, stop seconds, quick set date, 38 hour power reserve, it beats away at four hertz, and significantly, this cannot be overemphasized, it is adjusted in-house at Ox und Junior to run no worse than minus zero plus five seconds per day. Remember, a COSC chronometer is minus four plus six seconds per 24 hours during its test in order to earn the certificate. This is adjusted beyond those standards in-house. This is independent horology at a mainstream watch price. You do not have to go with F.P. Journe, Grubel Forcey, Romain Gautier, or Debatoon to own independent horology from one of the great watchmaking masters of our time. All you need is Ox und Junior. We're back with the Ox und Junior moon face. You can see it is fully loomed. About 50 of these a year are made out of Lucerne at the company founded by Ludwig Oxlin and staffed by himself and Junior, his son. An extraordinary watch in every regard.